Hey guys, welcome back to the 180 and 90. Today is Wednesday. It is day 28 on my 90 day journey to drop 50 pounds and it's leg and shoulder workout day. Today I'm going to show you why I structure it and layer it the way I do and how one of these workouts will last me the entire week. Stay tuned. Okay guys, well thanks for tuning in and staying with us for another 180 and 90. Today is my legs, glutes, and shoulders day. And it's always a tough day and it's one of my favorite actually. Whenever I start off on this, I'm always gonna start off with my internal and external rotations of the rotator cuff right here with the cable. And it's important that I do so because I have that injury in my right rotator cuff area. It inhibits certain movements and I need to really work on it to make sure that I open it up, I get that mobility back and I strengthen it so I'm able to go and, and do the presses that I need and full range of motion in order to get the shoulders um, stronger and work them in all the many myriad of ways and angles and get full mobility back into there. Now, I start off with that because it allows me to then really warm them up, work through some of the scar tissue and get them ready for all the rest of the shoulder presses and raises. And I superset this with traditional squats. Now, very important on the squats. You gotta love them. They're amazing. Not only are they great for your glutes and your legs and your quads and your hamstrings and everything else they're amazing for your core as well too and when we talk about core there's a couple things that I'm very adamant about when it comes to leg day with my clients and myself I do not support using weight belts that's the strength belts that you see a lot of the powerlifters wear and they tie it really tightly those thick leather belts around their waist so that they protect their lumbar when they squat heavy when I work with my clients being able to go as heavy as you can safely without needing belts because the moment you slap a belt on it removes the need for you to have to actually focus and engage your core and that I don't agree with I think it's very important to not push your body past the point where you need some type of external support for your core or your knees oftentimes you'll see different powerlifters wrapping up their knees very tightly so that their knees don't get injured when they're squatting very heavy which leads me to the reason why at our age looking at us being in the late 40s to 50s there is no need to be going that heavy that you need to wrap your knees and you need to put on a weight belt and cinch it so tight to protect your lower lumbar while you squat heavy there's no reason for that look at how those men and women are on their day-to-day -day life they walk as if they can't even bend their knees and they're moving stiffly throughout their day-to-day -day activities as we get older you should be thinking more about mobility when we were younger I you know us men we thought about how great would it be to be the Hulk or Thor and to be so massive and strong as you get older you should actually start to have a better appreciation for somebody like spider-man strength agility mobility being able to move quickly and swiftly and besides you don't have to squat really heavy or go that heavy with a weight belt and wrap your knees in order to have enough strength to knock somebody out besides the point we'll get into that later once we start touching up on the muay thai and everything so i start off with the squats my external rotations and then i move on so as we move on that first set is actually the only set that i start off with the shoulder exercise first everything else for this day I put shoulders after the legs simply because I don't want my shoulders to be tired or exhausted if I'm going to be putting any type of loaded barbell on my back or on the meat of my shoulders and we move on to the next superset which I love and that is the banded box squat along with a standing military press now great combination huge huge core exercise uh, as well as when using the band really pushing the abductors and the glutes to extreme by making them engage deeper with a wider stance and of course if you see here putting my heel directly beneath my knee and not behind my knee so it forces me to really dig into my glutes and my hamstrings and my hip flexors to get off the bench or the seat and then to get up into full range of motion uh, hip strain so it's an excellent combo exercise because these box squats if anything are going to make your normal squats and your strength lifts soar through the roof and they can be excruciating and you'll feel it all through your glutes all through your abductors uh, and some of the adductors in the push through and you're going to really feel it through that core and you top it off with standing military presses and you're squeezing your glutes tight you're squeezing your core tight and you're pressing above the head and that's a really great combo for a superset now i'm excited because i'm able to go a little bit heavier today so taking your time like i said guys in the beginning don't push too hard a little bit goes a long way when you're just getting back into the gym at 
at our age. And if you can see here, I'm able to now press military with my palms forward, so I'm excited about that. I wasn't able to in the very beginning because of my injury, and I'm also able to go up five more pounds on my dumbbell press over the head. And so instead of 25 pounds, I'm able to use the 30 pound for a couple of sets of 15, and that's exciting because that's a five pound increase. You know, that's from 25 to 30, that's a 20% increase in weight, and I consider that a big success. Now guys, I know what you're thinking. The leg quad extension machine is just a bad machine for you to use and it's not true. If you take two fingers and you can fit it between the back of your knee to the edge of the seat and it fits comfortably, you're gonna be fine. It's not gonna do any injury to your knee. And let me explain why. The leg extension machine has gotten a bad rap over the years and a lot of magazines, different health and fitness magazines will say, don't ever use this machine. Uh, it's bad for you. There's more injuries on this machine than any other machine or, or exercise equipment and these you know these magazines are not exactly being truthful there are they are they being accurate that it has caused a lot of injuries sure but it's because people weren't trained on how to properly use it look if you can fit two fingers from the back of the knee to the edge of the seat then you've got enough space that there isn't direct pressure on the patella or the knee itself if you can wedge those two fingers you've got space because take a look at it this way most people don't understand that they they put the seat back so far that the back of their knee is flush against that edge of the seat. And if you apply pressure toward the ankle in the opposite direction, well, guess what? You have pain and stress directly on your knee, directly on the patella, and that's when the injuries come into play. If you can fit two fingers between that space, there isn't going to be direct pressure on the knee, and all the pressure will be where you want it, right on the quads and the supporting muscles around the knee. Now in this case, I'm supersetting those leg extensions with one of my favorite shoulder exercises, and that is a delt pull apart. Now I'm taking the dumbbells, I'm raising them up to shoulder height from the front delt, pulling them all the way back, utilizing the rear delts to pull back, and then dropping them down the side using my side delts, pulling them back up the side, back forward, and down again. And that's one repetition. I like to do these about 10 to 12 repetitions. And right now at this moment, I'm just extremely happy that I'm able to go this full range of motion, even if it is just using 10 pounds. And I tell you, if you use the three principles that I taught earlier in this 90 day voyage, that is 110% intention, really focusing through the repetition, now moving that with grace, meaning a deeper to mind to muscle connectivity, and then utilizing the third principle, rhythm, you're able to maximize whatever weight you use and really gain the most benefit you can out of the proper movement. Okay guys, so I'm gonna end up this workout a little bit over an hour, not too long, and I'm gonna finish it with the last superset, which is gonna be calf raises, as well as a great side delt move, which is a wide range circle all the way up above my head and bringing it all the way down right about crotch level. Now, the calf raises, one of the biggest misconceptions that a lot of young trainers and a lot of young men in the gym have is that you gotta go heavy in order to build big calves. You don't. I've been doing this for over 22 years and I tell you, if you don't have heavy weight or the calf machine to be able to really put on that stress on the calves, you can do it in other ways. You can do it with massive repetitions and holding flexes for two to three to four seconds. Now, this is gonna put the intensity that you need because since we're using our calves every day, they do have a huge resiliency, so you need to push them past their comfortable point. So it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to use heavy weight. You can use it by really flexing the muscles and holding the pose and doing high repetitions. Now, let me remind you this. If you want proof that you don't need heavy weight to build big calves, let me ask you this. Have you ever seen a cyclist with small calves? Never, right? They've got massively beautiful calves and they're not pushing heavy weight but they're continually repetition pushing that bike working it through hills working it through streets and they all have beautiful calves now with that i finish off with that big side delt move uh, using the medial delt head and making big massive circles and truthfully i forgot what the hell the name is of this exercise and it's one of my favorite ones but i've been teaching for so long and training people that literally i i, I just tell my clients okay big circles let's do it but it is such a great exercise to end with especially if my shoulders are really dead tired and I want to focus more on my side delts to bring them out and broaden my shoulders, this is a great way to top it off. Now, oftentimes I like to finish with a rear delt, but since my rear delts still feel a little burnt, meaning in a good way from my back workout, I'm going to finish with the medial, the side delt head so that I can work on building those broader shoulders. And this is a great way to end it.
Hey guys, so thanks for joining in with us today for the 180 and 90. That's today's workout session. I did legs and shoulders today, and I hope you like the way that I layered it out for you and explained why I did what I did and how I'm doing it as far as approaching the next weeks coming ahead. Now, uh, again, if you like what you've been seeing and what you've been hearing and it's been informative of you, please hit the like button. Uh, go ahead and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already subs uh, subscribed to us so that you can be on top of everything. And of course, hit that notification bell. That way you'll know every time we put up a new video. Video. Hope you have a great day. I'll see you tomorrow on the 180 and 90. Take care.